Shalom everyone. Um, I search on the on my channel for the word jealousy to see if I made sermons about jealousy in the past, and yes, I made some. Now let me look at and three. Because jealousy and envy, together with covetousness, are big parts of, you know, the present day culture. And yes, I didn't make a lot of videos about envy. Well, let me go down. I need to go down here. Okay. You can look for these videos on my channel yourself. But... In this video here, I want to illustrate something, so, okay, let's, let me open paint.net, yes, we're going to do some drawing, well, I'll be doing some drawing, and you are free to take notes, just want to illustrate something to you, yes, um, this uh, netbook, this mini laptop has only two gigabytes of memory. So that's why often it takes a while before a program opens. I thank you for your patience, guys. Okay. This is going to be my whiteboard now. So feel free to take notes. Okay. So let's... Let me... Let me it's going to be on a circle. Yes. Okay. This is a circle, guys. Right? And let's pretend this circle is heaven and earth. Wait, you know what? I know something better. Let me do this differently. Uh, let me go back. Yeah, okay. This over here. And this. Okay. Mm. You'll see where this is going. Hold on. And Okay, now I need to turn over here. Okay. Okay. Now well, let me make some notes.
Okay. Now, guys, what you have here are basically two models. In one model, you have God over here, solitary in a solitary individual separated from all that exists. And this is what they call the universe. Here you have the heavens. That's basically the spiritual realm, and you have the earth realm, the physical realm. And as you see, heaven and earth are intertwined, intertwined together. But they'll still separate from God. This is what is called the theistic worldview. It comes from Neo. Platonism, based on ancient Greek, Roman philosophy. Okay, so this is this rule for you over here, right? Now let me make this a little bit smaller. Yeah. So in this worldview over here, guys, there is this huge. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna just a huge gap separation between the alleged creator and heaven and earth. Therefore, also between it's a it's a huge distance between the Most High and humans, we. Now, let me draw a line here. No, no, I'm not going to draw a line. I'm going to... Hold on. I'm going to erase this. Right, just like that. Let me fill in the empty gap. And now I'll be writing again. Yes. Father, Son, and Spirit are just three levels upon which the Most High manifests Himself. They're, they're not three entities together that form God. The Lord is one. Yahweh is one. Do you guys see the difference here? This is the Most High, and here, here's He's present over here. That means He's outside of creation. That means He's absent. That means he is, as I say, he is apathetic or not interested in creation. It also implies that he is cold hearted or narcissistic. He's only focused on self indulge. And this also implies that you have to earn your way towards the Most High in His presence by works and by, how do I say it? Yeah, it is basically your paying for acceptance. Right? So this model over here, it will cause self. It's really so centered because there's no trust, no relationship.
Huh. That's why there's a lot of stress also. And this also means that it all depends upon your self effort. It becomes political. Why? Because the universe is here, I mean heaven and earth are here. You are on earth in the earth realm and the most high is not present. This is big gap and separation. And of course, this G-O-D over here has senses to notice what's going on, but is still separated. Now, let's go to the right side over here. Here you have the Most High as a Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. And this is heaven and earth and they are in his presence. And not only that, Christ is holding this whole thing together. So, okay, let me look for, yes, this one over here. Uh, let me see. Multiply. So, okay, so Christ is, no, no, that's not what I wanted to do. So Christ is holding this whole thing together, both heaven and earth. So, imagine this, folks. Not imagine, because imagine means, I mean, I want you to think about this. Here you have Christ indwelling the whole universe. Because he's omnipresent. That means that... Well, let me write the writing sound for you. Uh, that means that there is no separation possible. There's no separation possible from the Most High. That means that imagined separation is possible, but that's a hoax. And this hoax is what they call darkness. And it's based on on belief. Distrust of God. Christ. So to make it more clear uh, let me see. In heaven and earth now, there are dark spots in the minds of creatures. That's darkness. Those are places where God's will is not necessarily done. But it's only permitted temporarily. Understand this: those dark spots in the in heaven and earth, they do not exclude nor annul the presence of the Most High. Just like John, chapter one makes clear, the light shines into the darkness, and the darkness cannot comprehend it. See, when you have a shadow, it's because the physical light is blocked from shining. 
pass your hand or pass a physical object. So that light can be terminated, but Jesus Christ, the Word that became flesh, He cannot be terminated by the imagined separation of fallen creatures. So He is shining through all of the darkness. It's only that. So darkness or let's call it what it is go right over here evil is not a real thing remember in Genesis chapter 1 and 2 it makes clear God made all things and was all very good now evil is when a creature, whether it's an angelic creature or a human being, when they operate in this source of words of God, there's an imagined separation taking place inside of them. And this will lessen the, the quality of their being. And this is what evil is. Something of reality is perverted. That's what evil is. But is not something real out of itself. Evil, just like you have, if you have warmth in a place and you suck all the warmth out, it becomes cold. The cold is the absence of the warmth. Now the cold is manifested, but it's only because the warmth is absent. It does not mean that cold is something objectively real. It is there, but it's only because of an absence. Okay, let me let me explain it in another way. Let's say that you have a car. The car is a machine, a vehicle, exists out of materials. The car needs to have gasoline in order to ride. See, driving is an activity. It's not some. It's not a thing out of itself. It, it's an activity of a thing. And in order for the thing to drive, there must be gasoline in the machine in order to, for it to work. So driving is a consequence of using a thing, the car. In order for the car to drive, there are certain conditions that need to be met. Now, if you uh, remove one of the wheels of the car, there's anybody's the car still has gasoline, the vehicle still works, but you will not be able to drive. Is it because driving is not possible? Driving is possible, but not all the conditions are met. So now a quality of the vehicle has disappeared. You understand? So, well, let's say you the, the car, the vehicle is fine, but there's no gasoline in it. There is electricity in the car, so you might be able to start the vehicle, but you won't be able, able to drive. Now, that being stuck... It's just a consequence because one of the necessary ingredients of necessary conditions aren't met. But is that being stuck a real objective thing? No. It's just a loss of quality of a thing. So that's what evil is. And therefore evil is always parasitic. Evil all because evil is the consequence of an imagined separation. Evil will manifest only by only when a when the right qualities are damaged. You see. So people often have asked the question: How could God permit evil? As if evil is something. As if evil is some quality that has some value of itself. No. Okay, let me explain it better now. Okay? Now, not better. Let me explain it in a different way. I'm going to save this. Um, okay, I'm going to open a new thing. All right. Data circle, right? And 
Uh, no, no, no. Let me go back. I'm going to put 100%. Okay. This is a circle, and inside, let's make it for a yellow. Okay. This, let's say this is a ball. And in the bowl, there's water. And the color is yellow due to the minerals inside. Let's say the water becomes polluted. Due to external circumstances or due to poison being inserted in it. Okay, let me... Okay, I'm going to, yes, let me go over here. No. Let's say now it's infected on the inside. What you have is a loss of quality of the object of the thing. Now this thing here is a reduction of the quality. It's ruin. And ruin can only exist when quality disappears. Ruin out of itself is not an objective living thing. You see? And I want you to understand that. Why? Because entities and human beings that operate in darkness they always they are parasitical what i mean by that is because they imagine a separation between them and the most side that does not exist they are now trying to become a little g themselves but this is absolutely impossible because this model is a lie. This is the truth, biblical truth. So in order for them to become a little G over here, they have to imagine this little this this the most high here is away from them. They have to um, deny reality that Christ is everywhere, and they have to imagine a hyper reality, a fake reality. And this fake reality always needs constant. Um, constant validation so those that operate in darkness are operating in great disadvantage you see spells are very are very weak you see I've talked a lot about spells on my channel and there's one thing I want to emphasize here spells are real the people are victims of spells, spells affect people's lives, spells even affect whole cultures and whole countries, but you need to understand one thing, a spell is very weak. A spell can only op only function in darkness, just as decay can only operate, can only manifest when there is a lack of quality. You see? So in order for there to be a lack of quality, the natural conditions should be tampered with. For example, an apple cannot rot unless an apple remains in an atmosphere filled with bacteria that shouldn't be around. You see, when one of the natural conditions are violated, then the quality is violated and that's where the decay uh, happens. You see? The same way, spells can only operate in darkness because the moment you recognize the light, Jesus Christ. You see through the spell, and the fact the spell is nullified. You see? But you see, this is something that well, not bad, I mean this is something that many people need to need to grasp. Spells are very weak. They're extremely weak. That's why you have to you have the media and also social media that tries to validate 
lies over and over again, because the lies are only true as long as they are validated by those who operate in darkness. Well, I'm going to close this now. I hope you've made notes and this has um, benefited to you. And may the grace of Christ Jesus be with you and be blessed.